I've got a 5-pin rotary encoder that came with the 37-in-1 sensor kit. A rotary encoder is like a potentiometer, except it doesn't have a physical limit and keeps turning. I'm using an Arduino Nano for this project. First, I plug the encoder into my breadboard. I'll plug in the pins from left to right. The first pin connects to ground, and the second connects to the voltage channel. The middle pin gives a signal when the encoder knob is pressed in like a button. I'll connect it to digital pin 4. The last two pins are used for the rotation signals. The code we'll use uses interrupts, so I plug these into digital pins 2 and 3, which are the interrupt-enabled pins on the Nano. In an embryo project, I rename the default agent Rotary Encoder. There's a pre-made group of nodes in the library. I find it in the library tree. As of the making of this video, it's in Inputs, Encoders, 5-pin Rotary Encoder. The library is maintained dynamically on the website, so when you're watching this video, it could have been moved. To make a copy of the pre-made node group, just drag it onto the node screen. Before going over the details, I'll show you how it's used. You shouldn't add any more nodes to this agent unless they are specifically related to the encoder hardware. Remember that in Embryo, you want to encapsulate everything with an agent and keep things cleanly separated that way. I'll make a new agent and drag the rotary encoder agent onto it. Now we have a clean node that only shows us the interesting inputs and outputs. When I'm connected to the Arduino, I can turn the knob and see the activation change. By default, the value is clamped to 0 and 1 and doesn't roll over, even if I keep turning the knob. The agent has a rollover input. If you set it to something above 0.5, it turns on rollover, and now when the knob is turned past the end of the value, the activation starts over and the trigger fires. The agent also has a reset activation and trigger input. When the trigger is fired, the output activation is reset to the input value. On the encoder I'm using, there's a built-in button. If you push down on it, the click trigger fires and the activation is reset. The rotary encoder agent is ready to use in your projects. The rest of this tutorial will go further into the custom Arduino node. I'll start with the declaration section. First, the variables used in the node are defined. The pins being used are set as constant values. If you're using a Nano, these will have to be 2 and 3. If you're using another Arduino, look up which pins are interrupt enabled and change these values. Next is a value that records the current position of the encoder. Next are two variables that define the range and behavior of the encoder. The encoder max variable defines how many ticks are in a full turn. My encoder has 20 ticks, but you can set this to just about whatever you like. Next is a boolean value that defines if the value rolls over or not. This value is set by the rollover input activation, which we'll get to soon. After this are two functions, one for each interrupt. These functions just check if the pin value changed and update the encoder position if they did. The setup code block is pretty simple. It just sets the pin mode on the interrupt pins and wires up the interrupt functions. The first dynamic code block is set to process on every update. It simply transforms the internal encoder position variable to the output activation range of 0 to 1. The next code block fires when the input trigger fires. All it does is set the internal encoder position based on the input set activation. Finally, there is an input change code block, which executes when the input rollover activation changes. All this code does is set the internal rollover flag to true if the input is greater than 0.5, or false if it is less. In addition to the custom Arduino node, there are two more nodes in this agent. A digital input reads the value of the push button that's built into the encoder. The activation value is passed through an above or below node to get a trigger event when the value goes from high to low. The go below output trigger was renamed to clicked to be more descriptive, made external, and connected to the reset trigger.